when we um, when we look at what's happened to the um, to the wind patterns, the westerly winds that run around go around the Southern Ocean, and they have um, they they help to keep Antarctica isolated from from the rest of the world, and so to the north it's very warm because of, of greenhouse gases and warming. The climate is warming very rapidly, but those winds have have um, actually been pulled closer to Antarctica by the ozone hole, and they're being pushed by um, the climate warming towards Antarctica, and they're going that so they're further south. They're closer to Antarctica, but they're also running faster. They're, they're, the wind speeds are faster. And this is the effect that I first realized was happening because it, I was wondering why are my moss beds dying? And, and it's connected in some way with ozone depletion, but it's not to do with UV because the UV, they're fine with UV. They don't seem to care. And it turns out it's because of this, it, there's this link with the, with the wind and, and, and also the fact that that has helped a little bit to keep Antarctica cooler because most of Antarctica is inside that circle. But those winds run over the peninsula. And when they do that, they take the warm water, the warm energy from the ocean and they take it over the peninsula. And that means that helps to melt the peninsula region faster. But it's not just Antarctica that's affected by that because that wind, those wind patterns shifting south have made it, have moved where the, where the belts of rain are and where the belts of dryness are. And so those things are equally connected to drought in, um, in the south of Chile. So streams with less water, trees that um, are growing less well now. So, they, so they've looked at the tree rings for, um, you know, for decades but they can see that over the last 50 or so years, the tree rings are tighter together because the trees are growing less well. So trees like North of Vegas and, um, and also less water in hydro, for hydroelectric schemes. So it has consequences for the, for the people living there. And obviously if it's drier, the farmers, the people living there are all going to have less water as well. Um, so that's happening in Chile. It's also happening um, on the, in New Zealand, and so on the um, on the western coasts we see this drying, but on the eastern coasts and further north we actually get more. Those areas are wetter, and so in those places some trees are growing better, and, and there's more agriculture. So Brazil has actually done better out of that increased water. So across South America you you see this contrast, and. And then you see the drought happening in the south of Chile and it's happening in East Antarctica. And also um, in some of the sub-Antarctic islands, so Macquarie Island, the plants there are experiencing this wind shift and, and drying out. And so it, it has profound effects across the whole of the Southern Hemisphere. Um, and as ozone recovers, which it will do, so because we have, have uh, did, uh, because we're mainly adhering to the Montreal Protocol, we've, we've reduced the numbers of um, ozone depleting compounds. Um, uh, the ozone hole is, is recovering, but it won't recover until, it won't be fully recovered until 2060. But as it recovers, because we're heating the planet so much, that wind shift will still probably continue because we're continuing to push um, to push those winds further south. And that, so it has these massive consequences. And so it's another example where, you know, we can do research in Antarctica and we can find things out that help us to understand what's happening in the rest of the planet. And Antarctica is really important for climate, for the whole global climate system, because the ocean currents and these massive atmospheric you know, wind patterns and everything else affect, you know, most, at least all of the Southern Hemisphere, but, but have implications in the oceans through to the Northern Hemisphere as well. Mm -hmm.